All right, well, we'll start here. We're starting a new book, Second Samuel. It's the reason why we have two Samuels is there's only so much room on them scrolls. <laughs> no page two. Yeah, yeah, there's only so much room on them scrolls. So, so we, uh, so, so they have to split it up, and so they kind of split it up, kind of at the end of Saul's Saul's life, and we kind of begin here uh, with kind of David kind of dealing dealing with that. So we've kind of seen in First Samuel, you kind of see the rise and the fall of of um of Saul and then and then we're gonna and we've we're seeing the rise of David and we're gonna continue to to see that now as we kind of go into the reign of David. So all right, all right let's see here on the furnaces are trying again. We're trying again here. Let's let's we'll we'll uh, we'll kind of talk and see if we can get get see if we can hear hear the smooth vocation vo- vocalizations of Ed Furness. Oh, he still can't hear you. I don't know what's going on, man. Must it must be his mic. Yeah, there's got to be something up with your mic. Like that's maybe maybe there's like it's not in the settings on Zoom. Maybe you can change your mic. I don't know. Like that's it's right underneath the mute. But uh, but we'll go. We'll we'll start we'll start ahead here. So um, we're in Second Samuel chapter one. Let's see. I got to hit my right button here. Let's see. I got to remember what to do. It's not like I do this every week. <laughs> like that's all right. Share sound, and here we go. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. Amal- What'd you say? Got a bad echo. Uh, listen to it for five seconds and tell me if it goes away or not. Malachites and David had stayed two days in Ziklag. On the third day, behold, behold, it happened that a man man came from Saul's camp with his clothes clothes torn and dust on his head. Did he go away? No. No. Dang it. Um, all right. All right, so hold on, hold on. I know, I know what's going on. I changed the <laughs> setting. I know exactly what setting I changed. Okay. Always messing with the sound, trying to make it make it better. So it should be a lot better now. Um, if uh, give it like three seconds, and it should correct. Okay. On the third, on the third day, behold. It happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? I have escaped from the camp of Israel. How did the matter go? Please tell me. The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are are dead also. How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? As I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear. And indeed, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me called to me and I answered here I am and he said to me who are you so I answered him I am an Amalekite he said to me again please stand over me and kill me for anguish has come upon me but my life still remains in me so I stood over him and killed him because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen and and, and I took the crown that was on his head and the bracelet that was on his arm and have brought them here to my Lord. Therefore David took hold of his own clothes and tore them and so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept 
and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. Then David said to the young man who told him, Where are you from? <coughs> I am the son of an alien, an Amalekite. How was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? Then David called one of the young men, Go near and execute him. And he struck him so that he died. So David said to him, Your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed. Then David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Indeed, it is written in the book of Jasher, The beauty of Israel is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen! Tell it not in Gath, proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor fields of offerings, for the shield of the mighty is cast away there, the shield of Saul not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back, and the sword of Saul did not return empty. Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Oh, Daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen, and the weapons of war perished. Okay, all right. That's kind of an interesting beginning. It's kind of a... I, I, I don't know if any of you have seen any of these movies, but kind of a modern superhero movie, like you, you, and you have like a sequel or any of the DC stuff or Batman movies or anything like that. They, they all kind of start this way, like kind of very lamenting, like every Batman movie has to start with watching his parents die again. <laughs> like like that, that, that's, you know, like that, that's just, that, that's just the way it goes. And this kind of feels that, that way as I was kind of listening to it. So uh, was there anything that kind of stood out to you um, in, in this? He mentions Jonathan the same amount of time as he mentions Saul. He mentions Jonathan the same amount of time he mentions Saul. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The um, the the uh, yeah, that's that's true. That's true, and that's that is interesting. Uh, that that he, I don't know. Do you have a take guess to why that is? He he says like a brother to me. Yeah, yeah, he's like a brother. So like he cares, didn't care a ton for Saul. He yeah, I mean, Saul was his king, and that's where the loyalty was to his king. But yeah. Jonathan, he loved. Yeah, yeah, and Jonathan, he loved. So I I anything else kind of stand out here? He didn't die that way. He didn't die that way. According to the last, when you're reading him, yeah, Daniel, he fell on the sword and died. Yeah, this one, this man comes over and kills him. So it's two different stories there. Yeah. Now is that so? So the end of Samuel, the end of Samuel one, 
uh, Jonathan fell on his own sword. Is that what you're saying? So, yeah, so, so. Now, this one, this man comes in and says, no, he killed him. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, how do you how do you feel about that? Like that's. I think he's lying. Do you think he's lying? Yeah. He thought that David was gonna praise him. Mm. Him. Yeah. He got rewarded in a different way. He did. Yeah. 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 That's. The Jewish Bible's note says that's one possibility, or Saul fell on his sword and didn't quite die. Oh, I see, because the thing that doesn't they really don't say, he just says yeah. he fell on his sword. Yeah. yeah. They don't get yeah. the Jewish Bible actually. They're, 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 all, they're all over the place on yeah, it. They, yeah, they said it could be yeah. either way, you know, it could be either way. Right? Very uh, true that this guy probably thought he'd get rewarded. Yeah. Yeah, either way, he probably thought that he might get a reward, because that's. Because that, that's the thing with David is that he has operated in this ascent to being king way differently than really anyone else would have. So, like, that's no, that, that's interesting. That's interesting. Like, that's the, the, the Jewish Bible would have that kind of kind of sense to it. That, that's yeah. No, that's interesting. So, so you could be a liar, all that stuff. But we see that you know he like. In all honesty, when I was reading that, I didn't think the guy would be trying to gain riches off of it. But like after you guys said that, that's probably what he's doing. No matter no matter how it was ending. The Jewish Bible also says that uh, didn't say killed him. They said finished him off. Yeah, yeah. that was finish, the term. Yeah, yeah. Finished right. him off. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Like that's you know, all, all warfare is no fun anyway. No. Uh, so, so that's that's interesting. So, oh, it's almost like David could could see through through all that because that's it's kind of a heinous thing that that he does to him. But if the guy's just trying to come and benefit off of it, he's, he's being sleazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like that's and, and David kind of see see what's going on here. Yeah, um, I thought at the very end of the poem was interesting. Because uh, we're right here at the beginning of Second Samuel, we're you know we're kind of done with 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 David, with David, done with Saul. But uh, that last verse is you know it's like how the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished, right? Like that's it. it just kind of seems like it's setting up this this story now with David, and and kind of kind of foreshadowing a little bit maybe like that's like. Like how how the mighty have fallen, and so so that's I thought that was kind of that was kind of interesting, and all of this there's there's so much going on with this this, this the the New King James Bible I use it's called the Cultural Background Study Bible, and all the study notes in it are like what would this what 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 was the cultural things going on around all that stuff, and every little every little uh, thing that was being referenced in this poem is like something they feel like they need to write three paragraphs about. <laughs> and, so, like that, that's, and so they, they, uh, so there, there's all kinds of like, just probably historical stuff. And they're just talking like, why is it talk about putting ointment on, on, um, or oil on the shield, on the shield and you know, just little things like that. We're not going to get into it, but um, the, um, let's see. Okay. Well, let's, let's go on to the next chapter. Ooh, this one's, this one's long. Oh, it's not that long. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll go on to chapter two. <laughs> it, it happened after this that David inquired of the Lord Shall I go up to any of the cities of Judah? Go up. Where shall I go up? To Hebron. So David went up there, and his two wives also, Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David brought up the men who were with him, every man with his household. So they dwelt in the cities of Hebron, Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king.
king over the house of Judah. And they told David, The men of Jabesh Gilead were the ones who buried Saul. So David sent messengers to the men of Jabesh Gilead. You are blessed of the Lord, for you have shown this kindness to your Lord, to Saul, and have buried him. And now may the Lord show kindness and truth to you. I also will repay you this kindness, because you have done this thing. Now, therefore, let your hands be strengthened, and be valiant, for your master Saul is dead, and also the house of Judah has anointed me king over them. But Abner, the son of Ner, commander of Saul's army, took Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and brought him over to Maonaim, and he made him king over Gilead, over the Asherites, over Jezreel, over Ephraim, over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and he reigned two years. Only the house of Judah followed David. And the time that David was king in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. Now Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out from Maonaim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David, went out and met them by the pool of Gibeon. So they sat down, one on one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, Let the young men now arise and compete before us. Let them arise. So they arose and went over by number. Twelve from Benjamin, followers of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve from the servants of David. And each one grasped his opponent by the head and thrust his sword in his opponent's side. So they fell down together. Therefore that place was called the Field of Sharp Swords, which is in Gibeon. So there was a very fierce battle that day. And Abner and the men of Israel were beaten before the servants of David. Now the three sons of Zeruiah were there, Joab and Abishai and Asahel. And Asahel was as fleet of foot as a wild gazelle. So Asahel pursued Abner. And in going, he did not turn to the right hand or to the left from following Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Are you Asahel? I am. Turn aside to your right hand or to your left, and lay hold on one of the young men and take his armor for yourself. But Asahel would not turn aside from following him. So Abner said again to Asahel, Turn aside from following me. Why should I strike you to the ground? How then could I face your brother Joab? However, he refused to turn aside. Therefore Abner struck him in the stomach with the blunt end of the spear, so that the spear came out of his back, and he fell down there and died on the spot. So it was that as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died stood still. Joab and Abishai also pursued Abner. And the sun was going down when they came to the hill of Anna, which is before Gaia, by the road to the wilderness of Gibeon. Now the children of Benjamin gathered together behind Abner and became a unit and took their stand on top of a hill. Then Abner called to Joab, Shall the sword devour forever? Do you not know that it will be bitter in the latter end? How long will it be then until you tell the people to return from pursuing their brethren? As God lives, unless you had spoken, surely then by morning all the people would have given up pursuing their brethren. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still, and did not pursue Israel any more, 
nor did they fight any more. Then Abner and his men went on all that night through the plain, crossed over the Jordan, and went through all Bithran, and they came to Maonaim. So Joab returned from pursuing Abner. And when he had gathered all the people together, there were missing of David's servants nineteen men and Asahel. But the servants of David had struck down of Benjamin and Abner's men three hundred and sixty men who died. Then they took up Asahel and buried him in his father's tomb, which was in Bethlehem. And Joab and his men went all night, and they came to Hebron at daybreak. Okay. All right. Let's see. Stop share. So we're starting to see a lot of battle stuff going on here, and it's like some solidification of sides and, and all of that. And that's and what what you're seeing here is basically David working to uh, unite un, unite the country. Like because that that's you know you have a king die, and, and especially when it's not just in line, you know, like that's like that. So you can see some people have grabbed Saul's. Saul's son. So, what kind of stood out to you uh, in in this in this section? Was there? It's kind of kind of battly. Probably the graphic where two people swords at the same time going into the. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you never see that in. <laughs> I like that. That's, yeah, that's it's very it's very graphic. There's a few things that are very graphic. Like that's like the one guy, the Asathel and the Abner type of type of thing that. Although I, I miss why Asathel was like following Abner. Is it was he pursuing him? He killed somebody else. Who did he kill? Like that that's yeah. because Abner yeah, I think it's confusing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. there's all, all these right. names and they're all similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like that that's keep him straight. Yeah, yeah. I think because it says before he starts running after him that David defeated right Abner so I think then Abner's people were fleeing okay. and this guy who could run really fast caught right. up to him that's uh, kind of how I took it okay yeah yeah and then Abner kept saying just turn away yeah, yeah, yeah go away yeah leave me alone yeah well that's and then okay. and then Abner takes any and he hits him with the blood to end of the spear and runs them through. Yeah, I guess that's a rough way to go. Yeah. Well, I like that. That's that's a rough way to go. The um, the um, my uh, my um, uh, the notes here like say that it could mean like one of two things. Like it could mean like that he was really a good warrior, and while kind of on the run, was able to like strike behind him really well. Or it could just mean that this guy's strength in battle is unparalleled that you could run someone through with the backside of his weapon yeah. like that's yeah so like that's it's pretty it's pretty rough uh no matter what um the uh did anyone uh, notice anything else they thought was interesting here when they when they set up uh, originally on either side of the pond there and they chose 12 soldiers to fight against each other yeah it was more or less the david and goliath but in 12 as in the 12 tribes yeah yeah you know, so we're starting to get supposedly supposedly the victor would have walked away and said okay if david's men lost technically david would have said okay that's it i quit yeah but, but yeah. all 12 died yeah and yeah. again the 12 tribes were at war with each other yeah that, they're not unified um I also thought it was interesting, um, Saul, the, the age of Saul's son that they put as king over um, uh, um, Gilead. Like, that's, I, I thought that was interesting, his age, because it's 40. Like, that's, like, these numbers are not arbitrary in the, in the Bible. So, like, so when we think of 40s, like uh, that's you kind of let your mind go and think about like our what are the other forties that we have in the Bible? You know, like you have you have forty days of rain and you have forty years in the wilderness and 
and you know all all these things. They're not the most positive things. And, and then and then you have uh, that uh, David was king in Hebron uh, over the house of Judah uh, and was seven years and six months. Like that's also interesting numbers. Like suddenly you get a you get a seven in there and the six month though. Like that's like this complete number and this incomplete. And we may be looking at, in this stuff too deep, but these numbers. They're, they're right. Does it say in control of the whole all of Israel? Yeah, is it kind of like a like all of it, but not yet all of it type of thing? Yeah, kind of could. Yeah, because that's the uh, and just to remind you know, everyone, it kind of how we view the numbers in the Bible here. They're like emojis. You know, they're they're kind of like well, there's good numbers and there's bad numbers. So you got like the 40, 40, you know, uh, 40 uh, days of rain and the flood and 40 years in the wilderness, you know, so it's kind of, kind of have that sense to it. And then, and then, then you have seven, which is complete. Six is incomplete. That's why six is not as good as seven. So threes are good. Uh, so, so it's over there. And there was, there was a few, um, there was a few numbers that were in here. Also near the end of the chapter, there was uh, David's servants. Uh, this is verse 31. David's uh, servants of David um, had struck down of Benjamin and Abner's men 360 men who died. Again, just like an interesting, interesting number having having three, but also like that incomplete part two of the six. So and this is nothing like we're saying as definite. It's just feelings. It's just feelings like that's kind of what's going on with the with <coughs> with the numbers um let's see so but yeah so we're kind of seeing that that everything's kind of in disarray but da david seems to be kind of taking charge um any uh any anything else that you notice from this chapter well i thought it was interesting so saul's son was 40 but yeah. he wasn't in the battle with saul and his other son no. He was old enough. It wasn't like he was a 10 year old kid. Yeah. So he was old enough, but he wasn't there. And he's not at this battle either. No. He seems to be kind of a. Yeah. Like, well, this is the right one. Like, if you ever watch any shows about kings and all that stuff, and there's always the fun with the succession. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, that's. And just from history, we know, like, you'll have a great king, and then they'll. And then the son will come up, and the, and the son's trash. Yeah. You know, like that. That's. That's the way. There's lots of stories like that. There's lots of stories like that. Like that's the. Like this is such a dumb story. I I remember. <laughs> I, I remember um, uh, when when Atlanta got their hockey team, the Thrashers. I remember when I when I was in high school, they had an ad on the radio for buying the uh, boxes and like season passes. They they were like, if you look out through history. Your 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 son is is probably not going to do your your name well. So just go ahead and spend it on these. <laughs> <laughs> like I know that, that's I had all these things. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it was. My mom was always like, I don't like that ad. <laughs> like like that. That's, I was like, I don't know. It's kind of funny. <laughs> like it, it was definitely memorable. I'm remembering it now. <laughs> like that. So go ahead and spend that money now and buy some season tickets. And so, but, um, but so, so yeah, so, so we, we just, you know, all these battles and, and all that stuff are kind of setting up the unification here. In my notes, it says that, that, uh, what's his name, Ashahel? Yeah. Was, uh, Sariah was David's sister. And these oh. three men were there for David's kinsmen that they so that's kind of another little. Oh man! Yeah, yeah they were his, his they were sisters, to David. His sons. Yeah, they're his nephews. So, so much going on. There's so many connections that I'm just missing right now. Like that's so yeah. So they're 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 over there. So kind of kind of loyal there, and we end up seeing like I don't I don't know like David kind of makes it right, but we kind of see Abner coming up in this next chapter, and I only know that because I was looking at headings. The, I know, I know. All right, let's go on to chapter three. All right. Here we go. Now, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. 
But David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. Sons were born to David in Hebron. His firstborn was Amnon by Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess. His second, Kiliab by Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite. The third, Absalom, the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, king of Gesha. The fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. The fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital. And the sixth, Ithraim, by David's wife, Egla. These were born to David in Hebron. Now it was so, while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, that Abner was strengthening his hold on the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine whose name was Rizpah, the daughter of Ea. So Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone in to my father's concubine? Then Abner became very angry at the words of Ishbosheth. Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show loyalty to the house of Saul, your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hand of David. And you charge me today with a fault concerning this woman? May God do so to Abner, and more also if I do not do for David as the Lord has sworn to him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and set up the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan to Beersheba. And he could not answer Abner another word, because he feared him. Then Abner sent messengers on his behalf to David. Whose is the lamb? Make your covenant with me, and indeed my hand shall be with you to bring all Israel to you. Good. I will make a covenant with you, but one thing I require of you. You shall not see my face unless you first bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when you come to see my face. So David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son. Give me my wife, Michael, whom I betrothed to myself for a hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent and took her from her husband, from Paltiel, the son of Laish. Then her husband went along with her to Bahurim, weeping behind her. So Abner said to him, Go, return. And he returned. Now Abner had communicated with the elders of Israel. In time past, you were seeking for David to be king over you. Now then, do it, for the Lord has spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and the hand of all their enemies. And Abner also spoke in the hearing of Benjamin. Then Abner also went to speak in the hearing of David in Hebron, all that seemed good to Israel and the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner and twenty men with him came to David at Hebron. And David made a feast for Abner and the men who were with him. Then Abner said to David, I will arise and go and gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with you and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. So David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. At that moment, the servants of David and Joab came from a raid and brought much spoil with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he had gone in peace. When Joab and all the troops that were with him had come, they told Joab, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he sent him away, and he has gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king. What have you done? Look, Abner came to you. Why is it that you sent him away, and he has already gone? Surely you realize that Abner, the son of Ner, came to deceive you, to know you're going out and you're coming in. 
and to know all that you are doing. And when Joab had gone from David's presence, he sent messengers after Abner, who brought him back from the well of Syrah. But David did not know it. Now when Abner had returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him privately, and there stabbed him in the stomach, so that he died for the blood of Asahel his brother. Afterward, when David heard it, he said, My kingdom and I are guiltless before the Lord forever of the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. Let it rest on the head of Joab, and on all his father's house, and let there never fail to be in the house of Joab one who has a discharge or is a leper, who leans on a staff or falls by the sword, or who lacks bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother killed Abner, because he had killed their brother Asahel at Gibeon in the battle. Then David said to Joab and to all the people who were with him, Tear your clothes, gird yourselves with sackcloth, and mourn for Abner. And King David followed the coffin. So they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. And the king sang a lament over Abner. <sighs> Should Abner die, as a fool dies, your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters, <laughs> as a man falls before wicked men, so you fell. Then all the people wept over him again, and when all the people came to persuade David to eat food while it was still day, David took an oath. God, do so to me, and more also, if I taste bread or anything else till the sun goes down. <sighs> now all the people took note of it, and it pleased them, since whatever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it had not been the king's intent to kill Abner the son of Ner. Then the king said to his servants, Do you not know that a prince and a great man has fallen this day in Israel? And I am weak today, though anointed king, and these men, the sons of Zeruiah, are too harsh for me. The Lord shall repay the evildoer according to his wickedness. Okay. All right. Like that's so. So that there's there's a lot of complexity going on here. Uh, that that's that's kind of hard to to follow. I kept having to go back and read. Like, all right. So what what was happening here uh, to to get us to this point? So I don't know. What, what did you guys what did you guys notice? What kind of what kind of stood out in this in this chapter? Abner was the power behind the throne. The Abner's the power behind the throne? Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Because when he sleeps with the father's concubine, the son is like, how can you do that? And he said, like, am I a dog? Have I not been loyal? Have I not, you know, I've not betrayed you? It's like, yeah. who are you to tell me what I can do? Yeah. And it was right but, after that he goes to David. Yeah, yeah, like so. Like there is definitely some s sneaky sneak going going on here, and and Abner kind of seems like like so. If you connect him to with the ability to run someone through with the blunt end of a of a weapon, you know, and 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 him, he's really able to just kind of collect people. It seems. And really influ like a, just someone that's really influential, and it seems like a lot of people like him too. Or afraid of. Or afraid of him. Yeah, yeah. But he did try to do the honorable thing with that 
boy running after him. He told him, stop. Yeah, yeah. And it was a battle. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, go to the right or the left. Yeah. Quit following me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of oddities going, going on. It's very, it's very human. (laughs) Yeah. Like that, that's this whole kind of how it, how it presents um, Abner here. Um, like you wonder how well David knew him because when David was fighting with Saul before Saul yeah. started after him, Abner was there too. So they maybe respected each other, their abilities. And, and it seems like Abner's got people with him too. A lot of people like 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 him and, um, and all, all of that. So um, let's see. Uh, was that with Abner? So yeah, he has Abner like bring Michael back to him. So Michael finally gets to be David's wife, and uh, and like that's it's a very sad scene. This whole <laughs> this whole thing like like that's there, there's there's not a whole lot of joy in it, but like the whole like her husband is like weeping, running behind her, like like that's like like that's like that's that's a rough that's a rough scene. Uh, I also think it's interesting in how they're crafting the story that there's a litany of David's wives and their sons. And then you have this ability almost right after it with Michael, like, and, and, you know, so, so like, is David being a little like, like, you know, little chink in the armor there? Or was it a political move? Is it strictly political? Yeah, like that's because we're we also have all these. That's what the Jewish Bible says. Was political. It's political, so political astuteness. Taking, taking the the old guy's wife made me the king. Yeah, yeah. Well, so that's um, that is definitely. So that's that's like that's if you again we go back to all these shows about kings and all that stuff. And and they will. You know, we're so blackers. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like that's, but that's you. Know, they that's how they would do treaties back in the day. It's like they would, I'll, I'll marry my daughter to you, and you know, and then then all all of these things. Like that's how that's how all those treaties would happen, and that's and that's why that's why Solomon has all of his wives. You know, as as we're getting up up to there, it's because he's made treaty after treaty after treaty after treaty after treaty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and so that's and then that ends up kind of being his downfall, according to to the authors. There, it's not so much the wives as some some of us like to joke about. But uh, uh, so yeah, so he kind of runs after. Um, let's see, um, and then Abner is making a lot of bold statements to David, you know, by the hand of my servant, David, I will save my people Israel. Like this is verse. I should, I need to tell the verse 18. It's like by the hand of my servant, David, I will save my people Israel from the hand of the Philistines and from the hand of all their enemies. Like, you know, it's this, and you know, he's like, I want David, David to be King. And, uh, let's see. I wrote, I wrote a note around that verse 21 era that um, so he's, Abner says to David, I, I will rise and go gather all Israel to my Lord, the king, and they will make a covenant with you and with the reign over you. So, you know, he's saying all this, all this stuff to David, like, I, I'm going to do all this stuff for you, which I guess is why he can leave in peace. And then what's his name? Joab, mm-hmm. like, isn't too pleased about that. He's like, you know, this guy's not. Maybe, maybe Abner's just one of these strong guys that he always he always follows the power and it's just going to David. Power broker. Yeah, power broker. Like that. That's um. Uh, let's see here. So Joab's like he 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 came to deceive you, and Joab just goes ahead and kills him. And uh, let's see. <coughs> let's see. Um, and, and then David basically has like a morning session for Abner, which and at the bottom of that, you can kind of see that people are softened to that. They're, they're softened to this king that isn't just reveling in any death.
type of type of idea, and uh, and that he that David kind of is unafraid to to mourn there, um, and so that that kind of stood out stood out to me. I'm not sure. I usually read a good bit of the Jewish Bible, and I, I didn't read anything for this this time. Uh, but but did did anything else kind of stand out? I, I have a, a question. <coughs> okay, so if if Abner's going to David to basically give him the rest of the kingdom, right? yeah, and Joab comes back. I know he's mad because you know he's got to revenge the death of his brother. Yeah. Why is it so open? I mean, Joab knows how David feels, right? Yeah. David already said, well, you know, basically better. Yeah. But then Joab just right there brings him back and kills him. I mean, okay, if if you have common sense. Yeah. Why didn't you just go out where the guy was heading home yeah. and kill him and no one would know one way or the other? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean? It just seems so stupid when Joab had to know that David just basically said, leave the man alone. Yeah. And then he brings him back. I mean, that, that thought process seems stupid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 like, it, it's... It, it, and there's so much stuff going on, and, and I and I think it's just it's establishing how how David is is bringing the kingdom together. You know, like that's like that's, and and it's and you have all of these people that are just angry at each other. Yeah. You know, like that. There's just there's no no reconciliation between any of these people. Like, and, and it's still like Joab is still like just just has revenge on 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 the brain, and it's like, don't you know how terrible this is? That was Abner's intent to betray David at that point. I don't know. Because, you know, that's kind of iffy, isn't it? I, I I don't know. Like that's we we don't we don't yeah, really know. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like so. Like was Abner. You know, like what Lee called him a little bit ago, like a power broker, like just someone that like, this is this is just who I who I'm going for. You know, he's just looking after power, and and he's like, this is David, so let's go unify all these kingdoms and bring them back now. And Joab stops that, or was Joab right in like you know in, in assuming that it's there, there's it, it's it's complex. It's it's complex. Well, it's- I'm sorry. In seven, when it says, you know, Abner's throwing the reason why is so that when David they get back to David, yeah. that they'll be protected from the Philistines. So to me, they, in this whole chapter, they've been fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. We haven't heard of the Philistines. Yeah. And all of a sudden, the Philistines show up again. Yeah. Is that just part of a power scare tactic? Uh, I don't. I think the Philistines are are a are a concern, and we and we see if we look at the headings coming up, is that the Philistines get defeated, <laughs> like that's like in chapter in chapter five, and and so the Philistines were still a problem, even though they're arguing amongst themselves. Yeah. Or the who owns the kingdom? Yeah. But it never says that they're busy fighting the Philistines. Like it yeah. seems to me that's when the Philistines would have come in and well, started the next knocking chapter everybody right off. They yeah. start fighting against, yeah. against them. Yeah, that would have been divided right. Yeah. And to me, verse 7 sh- told me that Abner was looking to become the king for sure when he got. Uh, oh, when he got the concubine? He took the concubine. Think, yeah, that's definitely a power move. Yeah. That's definitely <laughs> yeah. a power move. Yeah, yeah. So he's he's taking something of the yeah. king. The Jewish Bible says sex, sexual relations with the king's wife or concubine amounted to claiming the throne. Yeah. yeah. Mean, what follows suggests that Abner, Saul's cousin, was the de facto king of Israel. Okay. Yeah. Wanted, wanted that power. Yeah. So it's it's 
there's just a lot of complexity. And, and I think maybe that's the point of this is that it's everyone is just fighting. And, uh, and so, in, and we could probably get a few things from this where, where uh, we see that Saul's kingdom wasn't as unified as, as it was. And if it falls apart right after he dies, you know, like that's, that's not, that's not good. That's not good. The, uh, then, then you have, uh, uh, like, cause it reminds me after, after David's kingdom, yeah, there's all these blood share, but they do pass it on to Solomon. Now Solomon doesn't seem to handle it all that well, but, <laughs> but that's, you know, you, so you have, you have these senses to it and, and we're kind of establishing that David, David is a good king. So that's no, that's interesting. What, what we're doing right now is a lot of homework for me because in a few weeks we're going to start doing sermons on this on these books. <laughs> like that's, like that's 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 what that's what all this is. <laughs> but but um, yeah yeah. And so what um, was there was there anything else before before we kind of finish here? It's interesting that Joab, although looking to kill Abner in revenge, did not go out and meet him and fight with him. He sent messages to bring him back, and then he asked for a private talk, and that's when he killed him. Oh, yeah. He yeah. He seem to have enough bravery just to go and, you know, um, assault yes. or, or approach Abner and say, okay, you killed my brother, let's have it out. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's like, my, my, my name is Diego Montoya. You killed my, does anyone know that? Like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> like, you, like kill, you killed my brother, prepared to die? That's, that's from the Princess Bride. <laughs> has anyone not seen Princess Bride? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah. Princess Bride. Like, that's everyone's homework. Watch, watch the Princess Bride. Like that's. Uh, I think that movie was made in the eighties. Kind of classic, classic movie. Classic movie. Um, so, so the uh, yeah. So we'll 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 end right there. We got through three chapters, and and we're kind of coming up. As I look over uh, my our notes, we see that unification starts starts happening pretty fast here. And and I think what we're supposed to see at the beginning of this is the chaos. We're supposed to be be seeing the chaos of the kingdom right now. Enough chaos that we just saw. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So like that's I think that's kind of where 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 it kind of wants us so that we see the triumph of what of what David is able to to accomplish. So um uh so look uh well, I need to say goodbye to everyone on YouTube. So thank you, everyone on YouTube, for watching the recording today.